Welcome back to the Property Frontline. Today I'm here again with Scott Herxang. We're in our actual uh, seventh episode of the Market Watch series. And today we're going to look at market performance to and including the 30th of September 2024. Um, so we'll have a look at what some of the data monitors are saying about the market. And then we'll also take a look at what's influencing the market. And our topic of discussion this episode is about the issue of distressed listings. So let's get into that. So, Scott, can you take us through the house listing and performance for CoreLogic? What did they say? Sure, Deborah. Let's take a run into what they're saying for the capital cities. We'll start with uh, Sydney, um, up 0.1% for the month, um, nearly flat. Moving on to Melbourne, seeing a little backward movement there. We're down 0.2%. Seen that for a couple of months now, I believe. Uh, Brisbane still showing some pretty solid growth, up 0.8%. Adelaide strong, up 1.3%. Perth still continues to be a star capital city performer, up 1.6, although it, it has slowed a little bit. Um, fast growth rate, but not as fast as it has been in the past. Mm. Hobart, Hobart week falling a bit, minus 0.2%. And uh, Darwin uh, slightly positive, plus 0.1. It's like we got a small fall in Canberra as well of minus 0.2. Okay. So, um, Deborah, why don't you take us through the SQM asking price data and let's just see what Lewis and his team have got to say this month. Yep. Okay. So for Sydney houses, they've got Sydney up by 0.4%. Melbourne, surprisingly, um, up by 0.5%. Uh, Brisbane up by uh, 2%. Perth up by 1%. Very different to uh, CoreLogic. Adelaide up by 0.9. Definitely looks like we're getting a pattern here of slowing, though, doesn't it? Um, uh, Canberra down by 0.5. Darwin, Canberra, Darwin, um, Darwin houses up by 2.6. Uh, Hobart down by 0.4. Uh, yeah, and that's it. Nationally, nationally, like, what's the point? Really? Exactly. Um, okay. Any markets within the country. Yeah. Okay, Scott, so back to you. So this is the prop track data for houses. Do you want to take us through this one? Sure. This is our, our third source we typically look at for house price data, um, I believe by the realestate.com people. Um, it has typically been a bit lower than the other indexes. So let's just see what some of the monthly numbers look like. I see Sydney coming up flat, 0%, yeah. so no growth at all. Um, we do have some regional numbers on here. We won't dig into them, but the, you know, can sort of look at them as we go along the way. Melbourne yeah. uh, down 0.2%. That actually is pretty spot on with the core logic figure. Um, and then we see growth, but slower growth in Brisbane, um, just nudging up a bit, 0.1%. Um, Adelaide, 0.6% up. And uh, Perth, really uh, barely above break even, 0.2%. So that's quite a bit different than the 1.6% the figure we'd seen before. Hobart, yeah. Hobart down a bit. Minus 0 0.3 and Darwin had been up in SQM, but we're looking at a flat figure there of zero. Canberra up 0.2%. So um, sort yeah. of slightly okay. different numbers, I think, across the board from the different data sources. Yeah. All righty. And so can you take us through what PropTrack says for the annual growth? But this is across dwelling, so it in includes units. Sure. So this is last 12 months for all of the markets. Um, like I guess we can start here with a national figure of uh, growth of 5.7%. So that's all properties across the country, houses, units, townhouse, median price growth. 
Um, jumping down to Sydney for the year, up 5% for the year. Uh, Melbourne has declined over the past 12 months. We're at close to 2% down and still falling there. Um, strong growth in our BAP markets, Brisbane up 13, Adelaide's up over 15, and Perth for the year up a whopping 22%. Um, going back down to Hobart, we're slightly negative. <laughs> I said Hobart, Hobart. One <laughs> percent. The American accents uh, showing there. <laughs> um, Darwin up zero point nine percent. So just another year of no growth up there in our northern territory. And Canberra slightly negative for the year at minus zero point four percent. Okay, so interesting. Um, hmm. yeah. So, yeah, we can definitely see a trend of things starting to um, slow a little bit, um, but, you know, only time will tell as to where it heads from here. Um, so now what we'd like to do is switch to uh, where is the market heading? And our topic for today is distressed listings. So the media is really starting to hype that. And what we wanted to do was dig into, well, is this really an issue or not? Um, and what I'd like to do uh, to look at like what's really driving the market and, and where is it heading is let's take a look at the lending indicators from the uh, ABS, so the Bureau of Stats. And um, so we have to sort of squint to like to see the trend because this is a great uh, graph, but it is over a period of nearly 20 years. So you really have to look like right to the edge to see where, where the little trend lines are heading. But this is um, uh, new loan commitments for owner occupiers. And so we can see here um, for the most recent data, uh, which takes us to the end of August uh, 2024, you can see it looks like New South Wales is, is sort of starting to tick down a little bit. Um, then Victoria is also really starting to slow. But look at this one. Um, so this is Queensland and it's just, you know, really like taking leap after leap. So it looks like its trend line is still going up. Then this one here is WA, sort of starting to flatline with lending um, commitments uh, in WA. And then with South Australia, hmm, could just call that pretty much flat as other are the others but yeah with victoria yeah we're keeping an eye on victoria of course a bit obsessed with that um and then so new loan commitments for investors mm, so new south wales look really just in the last couple of months probably a little bit of caution there queensland still um really ramping up for investors yeah. yep and then um so victoria um we really are like it, it does look like it's trending, starting to trend down, as is WA after all that growth and action. And then um Adelaide. What did you what did you want to say about that that you said in the prelim, you <laughs> know, warm up? All yeah, exactly. Look, I think that this investor data on Perth, you know, really highlights just the large percentage of buyers out there that are investors. Just compare it to Adelaide. Um, so you've got a lot, a much higher percentage of buyers out in that market who are investors renting the properties out. To me, it just means it's probably a bit more of risk out in that market because as things do slow down, you have investors who have different priorities than home buyers. They're more likely to want to sell, you know, and take their yeah. gains. So um, it's just sort of something that becomes apparent on this data. Mm. Um, also, the investor data is quite spiky. If you just kind of flip back and forth between the two, you really do see, um, I, I can just see sort of a lot more and larger spikes in the in the investor data. I'm talking over the longer period of time. So you right, okay. more investors, you know, surging in buying when they think buying opportunities are good and then losing interest and um, potentially, mm. selling, you know, in, 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 in other circumstances. Yeah. 
yeah, I see what you mean. Mm. Yeah, and of course, um, Australia wide, we're really focused on trying to get this trend line up, so more home buyers. Um, yeah, we. Yeah. And we it, looks like, it, well. looks like, it looks like what we need to be doing is what Queensland's doing because obviously home buyers are buying up there. And yeah. one of the things we talked about is the state, you know, did double the first home buyers grant up there to thirty thousand dollars from fifteen thousand. That mm. does typically push up prices, as we will note, but it does allow more people to get into the market as well. And it's probably some evidence there of that that happening up there. Yeah, okay. All righty. So the next thing we wanted to have a look at, um, so we've looked at the lending uh, indicators. But, Scott, can you take us through uh, the total listings? So how many uh, properties have come onto the market? Uh, this is SQM data. Can you take us through this? Yeah, so this is looking at the entire market, how many properties are for sale, um, and you're seeing rising inventory levels, both in Sydney and in Melbourne. If we look at those yearly change numbers, 7% more properties on the market in Sydney now, 7.9% than a year ago. Um, and it's up a bit in the past month. Melbourne's up 7.2%. Uh, Can I interrupt? Like that is a really low base. Someone who's like been buying, um, you know, for people for the last 10 years, as have you, like it has been a really scarce market. So this is like, like I, I just think puddle, that's a puddle not in enough. the ocean is what you're saying, Deborah. It's a it's a exactly. Um, anyway, continue please. Clash of listings, and and we do hear rumors through the grapevine that there are more properties, you know, potentially coming on the market. We may see some growth in those numbers, especially if stuff doesn't sell quickly. It's something we'll we'll be monitoring. Um, and then we see mm. large falls in the uh, the stock on market in Brisbane, Perth, and Adelaide. Uh, Brisbane yeah. and percentage it's already a tight market. Um, Perth down thirty percent, and um, Adelaide down twenty two. So there hasn't been a lot of stock in those markets to begin with. So you can just imagine how tight those markets mm. to be. I mean, if, if anything, it it does set the stage for continued price growth, at least until we see more supply hitting those markets to to meet mm. the that's been out there. Yeah. Canberra, and then, yeah, you, do you want to do the rest of them? No, you continue, please. So Canberra um, is up 15% from a year ago. We're aware of a lot of new units that have hit the market there. Um, I see stacks of them from developers every day with all sorts of incentives attached to them. So that's going to take some time for that to digest out in that market. Um, it's not a lot of properties for sale in Darwin, just 1,450, and that is falling now down 15%. And there's a slight uptick in Hobart of 5%. So at that national level, it's pretty flat, honestly, uh, sort of across the board. So there's no massive surge of listings in its entirety across the country, but we do see these large differences by market. Mm, okay, thank you. And so on to the issue of distressed listings. So what we wanted to do was get a picture of how big an issue this potentially is in the current market and to determine what we're uh, focusing on as a distressed listing, we're using the SQM criteria. Uh, so when they're preparing their data, because they have got a really good, you know, regular monitor of distress listings, they use or they search for these sorts of terms. So mortgagee in possession, distressed property for sale. So they're looking for these sort of terms in the ads. Um, I won't go through all of them. Um, but Scott, you did a quick analysis today. Do you want to take us through that? Sure. So, um, look, I like to check everything myself firsthand to go with some of the indexes and third party data we get. So I went on realestate.com and I searched the entire country for several of the terms just to see what came up. And, you know, there's 201,000 properties listed for sale in the entire country right now. 
31 come up mentioning the word mortgagee, you know, it probably says mortgagee sale or mortgagee in possession, in possession. That's not a lot. Um, divorce only two mentioned that buzzword. So certainly that, that does signify to, um, buyers that there's true distress there. And often agents may not want to advertise that, um, words like forced used 461 times desperate 36, um, deceased estate sales are actually quite common. Um, 215 mentions there and, you know, Deborah, you had, I, you and I had a good conversation about those earlier about are are they truly, yeah. are they truly distressed or not? What do yeah, you so let's just take a quick look at that. So one of the ones that we found today um, just added, you know, two hours ago. So um, 120 Homer Street, Earlwood. So like I have been in this situation so many times where um, a deceased estate is not necessarily distressed you know, all due respect to Louis Christopher and, and, you know, he's got to search on something. Uh, but, yeah, often I've been in a situation where it's these deceased estates that will really hold out for an outrageous price because it might be the children of the person who has died and there might be a few and they, number one, they all have to agree, say there's four children, mm. three might agree but one will hold out for a, a higher price and so i'm at the end of you know trying to negotiate that um and have i maybe where it's like the um like where it's the government selling the property um but yeah uh in my experience it hasn't been you know oh. How about how about the status of the property? If it needs a lot of work, do you think then they're maybe more likely to the kids are less likely, I think, to want to put their own cash into the property to fix it up? That, that yeah, that is pretty nice. That is correct. Like much work. Yeah, that is correct. And um, but you know, if we're looking at a really tight market, or if these properties like you know where this one is in Irwood, in a in a Sydney, in a very coveted area. Um, developers, if this is a good block size, developers would fight tooth and nail. They wouldn't worry about something that had been renovated. Um, so, you know, it comes down to the property style, I guess. Mm. Um, and what was this other one that you pulled out? Um, so did you want to briefly talk about this? Sure. This, this is does look an, example, like uh, an example of a mortgagee sale. It looks like some right. developer has built these and uh, defaulted on his mortgage, his or her mortgage. So the bank has taken this back over. It's a, it looks like a very nice new three-bedroom townhouse in Southport. Um, mm. Not going to auction, so they're asking for best offers. Make, might make it a little bit harder, you know, to get that better deal on it versus having an on-site bidding process. Mm. Um, certainly does show you that you, you might find some new properties in, in this situation as well. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. So back to our data. Um, so yeah, do you want to take us through this is uh oh, you, you can explain what it is, distress listings. Well, well, sure. This is a so this is a total of the SQM data that shows how many total listings in the states feature all those keywords. Um, and you're you're only looking at five thousand properties across the entire country, you know. So if 200,000 are for sale and half of these are maybe not truly distressed. As we said, you know, you're probably looking at maybe 1% of all the properties for sale out there that are using keywords and showing some sign of distress. It's not, not the sort of thing I would think to be the calamity that maybe the media is portraying there. Um, certainly over in the U S market, when they had distressed sales, you know, we had mortgagee defaults of five or 10% out in the market, just to give you some perspective. Mm. And it, it, it looks like a lot of them are in, in New South Wales and Victoria. Um, it, do you want to just do a run through of the numbers there, Deborah, just, uh, just to run yeah. through the totals. So let's just run through the table. Um, so New South Wales, so SQM is saying that the yearly change is up by 11%, but off kind of what kind of base? <laughs> like that number looks bad. Um, once again, like I really respect what SQM does, 
out. Yeah. I just think that's sort of a bit alarmist. But he's just reporting on the stats, so that's what it is. Then in Victoria, it's 26%. But out of, you know, what, 35,000 that um, he says we've, oh, sorry, 40,000 that are new listings for this month, so now, you know, 1,000 looking distressed. I mean, maybe it's an, an early warning sign. Anyway, Queensland um, down by 12%, WA down by 20%, but once again off a very low base, South Australia down by 15%, um, the ACT. So this is up by 40%. Um, you know, they don't sell very many down there, but, uh, yeah, I guess there are, uh, there, like, you know, there is a bit of oversupply there. Um, so then the Northern Territory up by 11%, Tasmania up by 26%. Mm. But, yeah, so in summary, like, would you be nervous? Would you say the market's crashing? I, I certainly wouldn't run that as a headline. Um Yeah. And on the ground, I'm sure you see it as well. You don't really, I mean, you're not out at auctions and stuff and having any sense that there are sellers that absolutely need to get that property sold that week. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, we are starting to see a few people um, being, you know, more uh, like happy to negotiate. But, um, yeah, for the really, like, good property, it's really, like, you're still fighting tooth and nail to actually get it. Yeah. Um, mm, okay. All righty. So that um, summarises everything for us. Um, so thanks very much for visiting us again. And if you would like more information or some help from Scott and I, our, um, our contact details will be listed below in the description. Um, but if you like what we do and you would like to be notified about our next session, make sure you subscribe. And next time will be very interesting because we're going to cover off the topic of whether it's viable to be able to buy um, or build a portfolio of 100 properties in the current market. 100. 100. I can't wait. Can't wait. Okay. All right. Thank you very much.